Now, as we continue our service into the offering and taking up our offering portion, I want to just piggyback off of this story of this amazing woman who did so much and poured so much of herself out for Jesus. You see, the thing that I find so powerful and compelling about this story is not just how much she gave, but the way that she gave it. You see, there's this beautiful artistic expression that we see in her story as she pours out this alabaster jar of perfume and uses her hair and uses her tears to wipe the feet of Jesus. You see, in our intellectual society, we're not so comfortable all the time with these kinds of expressions towards God, but I want to highlight for us somebody today, a more modern version of this woman who lived in the mid-19th century and grew up in London. And this woman, she actually was born into a pretty well-to-do family, received a great education, and as, actually as a young child, she was recognized for her immense ability when it came to the arts. She was great at painting. She had a passion for it. Her teachers began to recognize it. And then she got the notice of one of the most renowned art critics of her day, John Ruskin. He took a special interest in her and he began to mentor her and help develop her so that she could become a successful female painter in her day. And later on, she ended up accepting Christ and she became a Christian and she started to get involved in some of the work of ministry around London at that time, which included some of Moody's revivals that were happening. She also served some of the women on the street and something began to happen in her heart, just as we were talking about, is the love that God was pouring out into her was now fueling this work of ministry. And so she was stuck with a little bit of a decision here where she had this heart and this passion for art, but she also began to develop a greater passion for the work that God was calling her to. And she started to realize that she was going to have to make a decision on which one she was going to pursue wholeheartedly. You see, she knew that God deserved more than just the partial dedication of her heart, but that he deserved everything. She decided to pursue the work of ministry, and she left behind this, what could have been a very lucrative career in painting. Her parents' dreams, her mentors' dreams, and even her own dreams, she left by the wayside to pursue this calling. God then began to implant in her heart a conviction to move from London down to North Africa, specifically what we consider modern-day Algeria. At the time, she looked to, to be sent by a missionary organization, but none of them would send her. She had a medical condition that prevented her from being sent, but she didn't let that stop her. She knew God was calling her there. So she gathered up a handful of other single women, and they moved down, and they started what became known as Algiers Mission Band. And while there, they dedicated themselves, and it wasn't easy. It was very challenging when they first moved there, but they dedicated themselves to learning the language, to learning the culture, to connecting with the people, and God began to use them to influence the people there. And they began to receive Christ. And the ministry began to grow. And she continued to implore others from London to come down and minister with them because she was convinced of something that was very unique in her day. She was convinced that North Africa would be reached with the gospel through mothers and women. How many times do we hear that? A pioneer in her day broke all kinds of barriers. She, she ended up spending 40 years of her life ministering to the people in Algeria. She continued to chronicle her time there with a daily journal. She also continued to paint pictures of the scenery, including desert flowers. And she ended up also writing parables. And, and her dedication to the work of the ministry was so much so that she ended up also translating the New Testament into Algerian Arabic. This woman, her name is Lilius Trotter. You can see a picture of her there. Beautiful woman who gave her life in a beautiful way to serve the God that she loved so dearly. You see, she broke through all kinds of stereotypes. Just like the woman with the with the alabaster jar, she was willing to go beyond what other people said was possible. You see, they thought in her day that single women should not be on the ministry field, the missionary field. 
she broke that barrier. Not only did she herself go as a single woman who was never married, but she also encouraged other single women to go as well. And God used their faith. She used the money that she had, her own money, to support and fund the time that they were down there. And she actually started the contextualization of the gospel in a way that still is used today. Lilius Trotter, what a beautiful expression of what it looks like. And I want to share with you some of her own words in one of her works that really showcases her heart devotion to God. Listen to the poetic language she uses here. She says, turn full your soul's vision to Jesus and look and look at him. And a strange dimness will come over all that is apart from him. And the divine a trait by which God's saints are made will lay hold of you. For he is worthy to have all there is to be had in the heart that he has died to win. Lilius Trotter. She reminds us that sometimes loving God can cost you. You see, for her, it cost her in some ways her reputation. It cost her her career. It cost her her money. It cost her her time. It cost her her very being, her whole life. But in many ways, her life, even though she didn't end up to become the famous painter, which many people had expected of her when she was younger, her life became a famous painting of what it looks like to love God with all of her heart. And that's how when we think about giving this morning, I want us to put our own hearts into a position that's, that recognizes that you and I each have a story that God is using to paint a, on his own canvas what it looks like to love him with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Let's love him today with all that we are. Let's offer him our best. Let's get ready to give. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much, Lord, for the various men and women who've gone before us, those like Lilius Trotter, who gave their lives for the work of ministry to see the gospel advanced, and who you used to paint such a beautiful picture, just like the woman with the alabaster jar, to show what it looks like in action, a love devoted to you. Father, may we all be those kinds of people where we open up our hearts and our lives and we withhold nothing back from you and allow you to use our lives to paint on your beautiful canvas through all, throughout all of time and history to showcase your love toward us that we may show it back to you. We thank you, God, this morning for those who are giving. We ask you to bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, if you're giving with us this morning... Just a reminder, three simple ways. You can use PushPay through the app, or you can also text EN City Church to the number 77977. You can also go to our online secure website to give, or you can continue to send checks through the mail. We have somebody here to collect those. I want to say thank you to all of you who have continued to faithfully sow and give so sacrificially over this past year, especially over the last nine months. We love you. We thank you for your sacrifice. And I want to encourage you that your life is a beautiful picture of what it looks like, of how God can use you and I to transform this world.